Hey guys, I'm trying this again. Thought I was recording and I wasn't. So I'm going to split this video today actually into three sections um, just to be able to double check that I'm recording to make it easier for me to upload and to give you more breaks because this is a pretty long lecture just for 15-1. Um, so we'll get up to the Supreme Court cases, then I'll pause. I'll make another video of Supreme Court cases. So not all these videos will probably be available right at 11 like I told you they would be, but they should be by noon or so. So chapter 15 that you looked at for today um, talks about the presidencies of two different men, um, of Kennedy and then after Kennedy is assassinated, of Johnson. It really looks at the uh, domestic programs or agendas of these two guys. So New Frontier is Kennedy's agenda. Great Society is President Johnson's agenda. It doesn't talk too much about foreign affairs. We get into the Cuban Missile Crisis, as you read for today, a little bit. Um, but we're not going to talk about Vietnam too much, for instance. We're not going to talk too much about civil rights movement. Civil rights movement shows up in Chapter 16, and Vietnam shows up in Chapter 17. Um, and so this is really focused on the presidency and what happens within the country um, with the exclusion of the civil rights movement of these two gentlemen. And so the election of 1960, I posted another really short video on the election of 1960 on the YouTube page. Um, but it's really interesting. Um, this is the first time that TV is a big part of a debate and we're watching our future president um, talk issues and we're watching him, we're seeing him. And so what's fascinating here is that the people who listened to the debate on the radio really felt that Nixon had it in the bag. Nixon has a long history in government um, and a very impressive resume. He was vice president at the time. And People thought that he was doing an excellent job, and those that watched the debate saw how cool, calm, confident, and attractive Kennedy was, and really felt that Kennedy nailed it. If you want to find videos of the debate, it's really easy to find these uh, videos online. You can watch them. You can see Nixon look a little shifty. He looks out of the corner of his eyes. He's sweating. He does not look good at all, whereas Kennedy just looks brilliant, um, like a movie star. And so this is going to make this a really interesting election as people are going to struggle with who to vote for uh, for a couple different reasons. For starters, because Kennedy is this suave, younger, attractive looking man with a beautiful wife and two perfect looking little kids. But Nixon has this long resume, has some really good ideas. Um, if at any point in time, I'm going to too quickly through a slide, just pause, and you can look at it. In no way should you write down all this. Um, this slideshow, and I think the next slideshow was made by Kyla, actually. A few years ago, I had her type up some slideshows. She loves history and loves this period of time and included a lot more information than what you would really need to know uh, for any sort of test for me. And I haven't decided what the test is going to look like for this chapter yet. I'll let you know right when we come back after break. So this medium of television, here's everybody looking at their little TV, uh, black and white probably for most people, um, is going to change how we think about politics. We had ad campaigns, cute little like commercials prior to this in the 50s for um, president, but nothing like what we have here with major ad campaigns and with us actually being able to see the presidential debates. And so um, polit politicians are now this packaged product. So think about today and how much, how a candidate looks, how well they speak on camera, how well they look, what their commercials look like, how much that influences what they get for votes and the kind of respect that they get. Collectively though, Americans were pretty of similar mind during the 50s, and the two political parties shared more commonalities than differences, which is so different than today. So this is about the closest that the two parties are going to be in beliefs and platforms um, for like the last 150 years. We're just going to get more and more divided as we get closer to the 21st century. So both candidates are going to agree that the growth of communism is a huge factor, a huge problem. They're both going to agree also that um, we need to do something to better defend ourselves. And so Kennedy uses the term missile gap, which talks about how the Soviets had superior weaponry, superior rockets, and they did for a while, and this will be proved um, with Sputnik. 
and they get up into space before we do. They put people into space. They put a dog into space before we do. Um, and it's going to prove that for a while, at least, their technology is superior to ours. Kennedy, though, is also, despite him being suave and attractive and very Hollywoodish, is going to face a lot of skepticism and scrutiny because he's Catholic. And so it's not the first time that we've had a Catholic candidate. Remember, Alfred Smith ran um, back in the early 20th century. Uh, but people are going to be worried that he's going to be talking to the Pope every night, and the Pope is going to be directing the 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 movement of the nation and suddenly everyone's going to have to be Catholic. And he knows that people are thinking this. And he says flat out in a speech, I believe in the separation of church and state and that it's absolute and you don't have to worry about that. And during his presidency, it's not, it doesn't end up being a factor. So it's a relatively narrow um, victory. Your book does a good job of explaining it. This is county by county. Um, who votes for whom. This is going to be a third party candidate down here, um, someone who's very still old school segregationist um, type of idea. But Kennedy is going to end up winning. Of course, we already know that because we've read the history books. We know the history. Um, and it's just going to really open up the way, though, for Nixon to then run for president in 1968. He'll end up having no problem achieving the presidency at that point in time. So Inauguration Day, January 20th, 1961, you see on the cover of Time Magazine, Kennedy being sworn in by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. That's what happens at this point, in or happens at inaugurations. Um, he's young. He's attractive. He has a beautiful wife. Um, he's got two super cute children. And he seems to be from a different generation. Although he is a little bit, but not. I mean, Eisenhower was a World War II vet. So was Kennedy. Look into Kennedy's story of what he did during the Pacific Theater um, on his PT-109 boat. There's There was a Hollywood movie made about it. There's some great stories out there about it. Um, his the, the PT boat gets blown by the Japanese. F guys flying into the water. Kennedy's back gets broken. Um, but he's an excellent swimmer, swimmer, has great upper body strength, and he rescues a couple of his guys and swims them to safety in the Pacific Ocean. And because of this, he's like a hero, okay? He's a legit war hero, which we don't think of with Kennedy. Um, and he gets a lot of accolades for that. But because of this also, he lives with chronic pain his whole life. A lot of people speculated that he was taking high doses of pain medication through most of his post-war years, which would include during his presidency. But it's a great speech if you want to watch it. The torch has been passed to a new generation. So he's talking to those young World War II vets um, who have the kid and uh, the kid or two, the dog, the house, um, the car, the wife, um, and that's us. That We're the new generation, and think about what you can continue to do for your country, not what your country can do for you. It's a great speech. It's a very iconic speech. Kennedy was great, though, at putting on this kind of Hollywood suave persona, and part of that has to do with Jackie, his wife. In 1962, she remodels the White House and does this live television tour in which three out of four households watch this tour, and it ends up being broadcast across the world, actually rebroadcast because it has such interest. But the White House had it been remodeled in, like, like a century plus since like the Lincolns probably. And so she just updates it. Um, and she gives everyone a tour of what it looks like. And it really opened up the White House, made them more approachable. Um, but, but Kennedy also was really smart about how he played with the media and he had people helping him with that. So he invited Time Life magazine photographers into the White House to watch him as a family man. There's great pictures of John John sitting under like his dad's desk in the Oval Office. Um, and so he knew what he needed to do to make the American public love him. And so a lot of people have really fond memories of Kennedy. And that's because of this persona he put forward this Camelot perfect family idea that they put forward. And then also because he was assassinated, to be blunt. Um, because as a president, he was not that good. He really struggled with Congress. Um, he tries to get a lot of really forward thinking uh, programs established, and he's not able to. He simply cannot get the job done. Um, people don't really trust him. He, he doesn't have the the personality strength 
to do what needs to be done. In addition, a lot of people think he's a little shifty. His dad had been in Congress for years, very well-known man, had ties to the mom probably, and Kennedy appoints his brother as attorney general, which is just not a really wise choice, politically speaking, although Robert Kennedy is going to be a great asset. But he tries to get these programs passed. He's not going to succeed in getting some of them passed. But when President Johnson takes over, Johnson has the personality needed in order to get things done. Um, and he's going to get health insurance to the elderly, Medicare and Medicaid passed. But Kennedy, not quite as much. He does have a few victories. He's able to convince Congress that they need to do deficit spending in order to put more money into science and math education for kids and for defense and space exploration. So for instance, NASA is going to get a lot more money. Um, he's also going to help um, businesses and our, our economy make some adjustments that are needed. So we've got the post-war era. People have bought everything they need, though, are living the perfect life. How can we change what we're producing to provide more consumer goods to people? Because just like what we saw in the 20s, people have what they need. Now we need to start giving them what they want. And so he's going to help with business efficiency, with business production. He has some interesting deals that are made with labor leaders, if you wanted to look into that. And then um, he uh, does a tax cut, uh, which is going to make him popular with some people. He makes some great strides in women's rights. He doesn't uh, put any women into cabinet positions, but he actually puts them into higher up positions in the government, including Esther Peterson, who's going to help him develop um, how women should uh, be treated in the workplace now that women want to go back to work. We've got all these vets, they have their kids, now the kids are going back to school, and a lot of the wives want to go back to work. And so he does the Presidential Commission on the Status of Women, he creates it in 1961, um, calls for an end to gender discrimination in the workplace, especially with federal jobs or U.S. government jobs. And so if a man and a woman present themselves for a job, they've got equal qualifications. You cannot automatically hire the man just because he's a man. You need to look at the, the female candidate as well. In 1963, he gets an Equal Pay Act sign. That's going to be more or less on the federal level. Do not confuse that with the Equal Rights Amendment. And in reality, women still technically make less than men, but we'll talk about that in economics because it's not really, people make that figure lie um, a lot. So we'll talk about that when we get to economics um, when you're a senior. We're going to pause right here. I'm going to end this video because I want to take time then to uh, talk about the Warren Court and um, the changes that we make under Chief Justice Earl Warren, who it's his birthday today. So happy birthday, Justice Warren, even though he's, you know, dead. <laughs>